You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. You've seen the thumbnail and you must know that we're going to be making the fabulous alien queen herself, Miss Juno Birch. I'm so obsessed with Juno from her drag, artworks and gameplays. She has a very distinct style of merry 60s fashion to spacey alien goddess, dashed with lots of colour. For my rendition of Juno Birch, I want to transform her into her favourite Sims character, Joy Desperate. <laughs> At least favourite to hate, yes that's happening. I absolutely do not recall when Juno started to hate Joy Desperate, but I find it absolutely hilarious. And I feel like Joy Desperate needs some payback, so let's get Juno Birch a Joy Desperate makeover. I retained all of the key characteristics of Joy Desperate, from her pigtails, pink cami and blue jeans, with a Juno Birch twist of course. A cow plant pet also felt necessary for a Juno Birch doll, for she loves using them to torture and kill other sims, especially Joy Desperate. Before we start with the transformation, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN helps secure your internet connection by hiding your IP address and protecting your data by sending it through an encrypted tunnel. In addition to keeping your private information private, Surfshark allows you to browse the internet without ads, trackers, and malware or phishing attempts. So if you've ever accidentally clicked on a link that infected your computer and made your information vulnerable, you're not alone. And Surfshark is here to help. If you want to better protect yourself, right now Surfshark is hooking you guys up with an amazing amazing deal. If you click on my link in the description below and enter the promo code HEXGEN, you'll get 83% off and 4 extra months for free. But you know what my favorite feature is? Surfshark allows you to access blocked content that's not available in your area, like movies and Netflix shows. You guys know how Netflix showcases different content depending on your country? Well, you can access those contents by changing your IP address. I have been in the search to rewatch RuPaul's Drag Race Season 1, yes, the one with the Vaseline filter, and I changed my location to the Philippines and they've got seasons 1 to 13. I was so shook. Like, US Netflix could never. If you're still not convinced, Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so don't hesitate to try it out yourself by clicking on my link below to save 83% and get 4 months for free. Again, I would like to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video, now let's transform our alien queen. For today's victim, I will be using a Model Muse Barbie, of course. You guys know my affinity for Model Muse. It's just so nice. I love the pose. Over here, I just had her rubber band to kind of like, you know, pose her a little bit better. But yes, this is the Barbie that I will be using. As you can see, she has a beautiful head sculpt. I do not think that this will perfectly match Juno Birch. However, this is the, the one I have and I'm like, it's gonna work. I'm sure it will. I mean, I'm hoping it will. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start by prepping her face. This will actually go back later. I love these earrings. And let's go ahead and cut off her hair. You know, we're gonna prepare the base. We're gonna prepare the canvas for this doll. And you guys know, you've seen this. I'm just gonna go ahead and take my scissors and cut off all of her hair. And then with our acetone or nail polish remover, if it has acetone in it, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the factory paint very, very carefully and very, very easily. Again, if it has acetone, it's gonna be, it's gonna come off really easy. But if it's just nail polish remover without acetone, it may take some elbow grease, you know what I mean? And I actually want to start by making her wig, so I have all of these wefts prepared. This is yarn wefts that I have made. And I have my wig cap here as well. And I'm gonna give her kind of like a beehive moment with pigtails. So over here I'm just gluing some styro eggs onto her. And let's go ahead and start covering her head. I really thought this look was perfect because Juno Birch loves doing the beehive moments. It's very 60s, it's very vintage, and I feel like it's just one of her signature looks. And I thought, why not incorporate that for this doll? And I feel like it is giving very, what, Cindy Lou Who? Is that what it is? Let me look it up really quick. Cindy Lou Who? Lou Who hair. Yay. Yeah. 
And now the wig is done, we can do some finishing touches later when we are completely done with the doll. But this is what I have so far, and I think it's so, so cute. Definitely very Juno Birch, definitely very jo Joy Desperate. Well, it's a lot more Juno Birch, but you know what I mean? She is the main star, so why not? Now let's go ahead and transform the body. I will be modifying this a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and super glue her joints, her thighs over here, so that they are permanently posed. I will be giving her a little bit of hips, just to give her more shape. And I'm just taking my epoxy sculpt and I will be sculpting it seamlessly, or at least I'm trying to. Again, I'm just giving her a little bit, a little bit of hips, not too drastic for this one. We're not doing a Kim Kardashian doll. And of course I sanded it so it is all smooth and seamless. And now let's go ahead and transform her color. And I have this Pan Pastel Artist Pastels that I got from Blix. And it is in the color Violet Tint. So I chose Violet for Juno Birch because she loves doing those colors, pastel colors on her skin. And of course, I sprayed this with Mr. Super Clear, and you just gotta build up the layers, and I think this took roughly six layers, maybe? More, maybe less, but as long as you get the pastel color in there, you are good to go. And now let's go ahead and put on her head back, and again, we are doing the same exact thing, spraying her face with Mr. Super Clear, and transforming it with the pastels. And now we can finally give her some face, some drag makeup. Now Juno Birch changes her face a lot. I mean obviously it's mostly covered by her sunglasses, iconic sunglasses. But for the most part she loves a really really graphic eye, a graphic eyeliner, colorful eyeshadows and everything. The main thing is that her eyebrows are always really really high and very very um, kind of like rounded. They're not arched at all. For her lips, Juno Birch does overline a little bit, so I'm trying to give her that shape. And of course, I'm just using a mixture of watercolor pencils, pastels, and also paint. And because we've changed her skin color, like we're technically painting over the pastels of her skin, um, you want to be kind of careful not to scrape off the skin that we just produced. And of course, Juno Birch is no stranger to a wing eyeliner, and I love that for her, and I love that for this doll. <laughs> Instead of making her eyebrows blonde, I decided to give it the black eyebrow. I just feel like it's more graphic. It's giving more of like, I'm an alien disguised as a human, which is what Juno Birch like whole drag persona is all about. So I thought that was kind of cool. And of course, Juno is no stranger to highlights, so I'm just giving her that for her nose. And I'm also contouring it to really chisel the nose. To make the whites of her eye a little bit more bright, I am using my acrylic paint in white. I really want her lips to have multiple dimensions in the color, so I'm using lots of reds, pinks, and even some magentas here and there, and I'm blending it all together. I just want it to really look pouty and, like, juicy. I'm smoking out her eye just a little bit, not too much, because I still want it to look really, really blue. And I'm giving her some lower lashes in blue, just so that it's a little bit more subtle and not too drastic. 
And now it's time for the iconic Juno Birch highlight. And this one really just, it's so graphic. I'm using white acrylic paint for this one. It's matte. And I'm just having fun with it. I'm highlighting her forehead, her cheekbones, her nose, her chin. This is definitely a Juno Birch signature. And I'm actually doing that also for her decolletage. And now it's time for lashes, for 3D lashes, and I'm just using Elmer's glue wall to adhere it. And these are individual fake human lashes. And to make her lips more juicier, I am gonna go ahead and gloss it up. And voila, yes, that's happening. Juno Birch is finally done, as you can see over here. So I'm really, really proud of this face up and I can't wait to see it all come together. Now for her iconic glasses, um, over here I actually got this from eBay and it was a bunch of glasses for Barbie. And I chose this one because it looked really, really cool and the color is already perfect. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the glass part of it black and we're gonna add the highlight, of course. Now for the outfit, of course, this was made by the amazing Deluxe Designs on Instagram and Etsy. And I just requested a plain pink cami and also a bell-bottom jeans. You know, we still have to reference Juno Birch, um, even though we're doing a Joy Desperate look. Now for the pink cami, I want to paint it cow print because Juno Birch loves a good cow moment, a cow print. And I thought a pink cow would be so, so freaking cute. It reminds me of the pink pink hello panda for some reason. I don't know, I just love it. Strawberry cow, very harvest moon, story of seasons, very that. And I just used a acrylic paint mixed with Mod Podge. And now for the bell bottoms, again, I'm painting it with the same exact mixture. It's pink, acrylic paint with Mod Podge. And this one is actually a reference to a Juno Birch sculpture that she's made before, uh, which is this one. And I thought like the smeared lipstick all over her body was so, so cool of a design element and motif. And so I wanted to incorporate that for her bell bottom. I thought, why not? And it fits the color scheme. It fits the color story really, really well. And yes, I did the front and the back for this one. And all of the lines are connecting together, which I thought was so nice. Now let's go ahead and put that together and oh my god, it's looking so so cool. We're close to it. Let me just put a belt around her. Now for the plum bob, of course, Joy Desperate is a Sims character. We cannot, we cannot not give her a plum bob. And so over here I'm just cutting the shape and I am sculpting it with epoxy sculpt because I couldn't find a real plum bob anywhere, like a gem. So I have to sculpt it myself, you know what I mean? We gotta do things our ourselves sometimes. After it cured, I sanded it and made sure it is so smooth. And now let's go ahead and make a mold out of it. So over here, I'm just using the Easy Mold um, Clay Putty. Um, it dries really, really quick. That's why I really like it. And you just mix the two part together. And then you just want to press the plumb bob in there. After it cures, it took maybe like, what, 20 minutes and then it was finally done. I'm gonna go ahead and use some UV resin for this one. And I'm gonna work layer by layer because it is a solid mold. So the light will not go through it all the time. Over here, I'm using a mixture of green and yellow to get the actual plum bob color. But then it didn't really fit the overall color story for the doll. So I made a pink one. And honestly, the pink one is so much cuter. And now for another iconic Juno Birch motif is her gloves, her yellow gloves. And over here, I just made two gloves, you know, off camera. Um, they're just a tube, which was, you know, if you were on my live stream, this is what I was sewing. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and try to match it with paint for the hands.
And of course, these gloves also need some red nails. Iconic red nails. And now for some accessories, I want to give her some pearls. I don't know why, but I really, really love pearls. You guys know. So over here, I'm just going to go ahead and string these micro pearls together with some thread and needle. I like using thread for like doll necklaces because it's softer and more malleable. So let's just go ahead and wrap that around her neck. And again, those earrings are making a comeback. I don't know why, but I really love those earrings and I thought they fit Juno Birch's, this at least this overall aesthetic really well. And for her shoes, I'm just using these mules over here, this open toe mules. I thought they looked perfect color-wise and fit-wise with her bell bottoms. And we're pretty much done with Juno Birch, hell yeah. Now for the cow plant, let's go ahead and take some aluminium foil over here and we're just gonna make a ball out of it, um, roughly to the shape of a cow head or, you know, the cow plant head. So you have the, the nose and the actual skull area over here and you can build it up more if you want, but I'm gonna build it up more with the epoxy clay. And oh my gosh, I was using so much clay for this project. Maybe not as much as I used for my Ursula doll, but pretty comparable, I think. So I just mix the, the clay together and I'm flattening it um, to create kind of like a skin for the, the foil. We're gonna wrap it up and you wanna use foil in the middle because epoxy clay is so heavy by itself. So you want to make it as light as possible. Over here, I'm just building up the skull of the cow plant a lot more, trying to really follow the references and everything. This one was actually so, so fun to create. I've never really sculpted. Have I? I don't know. I've never, I mean, I've never sculpted a cow plant, and this was so fun. It was so cool because it's so cartoonish, but at the same time, there were elements that I wanted to like make kind of realism. So I'm like, oh my god, this is so fun. The cow plant definitely is one of my favorite Sims, like, iconography or, like, motif. Like, the cow plant has been there, I believe, since Sims 2. And it's just so, so cool. It's so, so cute. And I love when, like, you hear the bells of the cow. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just such a fun concept. Over here, I'm just adding more details like the teeth and like, you know, the mouth and everything. So lots of steps for this one. Um, and I believe this roughly took maybe five days to create. Um, more or less, I, I maybe less, at least the sculpting part of it, because um, you wanted to wait for some parts to dry and stuff before you actually work on the other parts. So that's the only thing with epoxy sculpt. You gotta like know when to wait and you gotta know like what to make and everything. So lots of trial and error for sure. And for the cow's spine, I guess, is that what it's called? I'm just taking this wire and I am doubling it up, tripling it up, quadrupling it up, and I'm twisting it. I really want it to be really, really strong um, and it can hold the cow's head. Again, that cow head is so, so freaking heavy. So the wire I needed needs to be really, really solid and structured and strong. And I'm just twisting it like the cow plant, you know, again, using lots of references and I'm covering it up with epoxy clay. And I put super glue inside just to make sure it is completely secured. But of course, we are securing it again with some clay on the outside. I want this to blend in into the head. As you can see, I'm going back and forth, back and forth, um, trying to finish, you know, a th one thing and then I'm going back to the other because the other one has dried. So there's a lot of like back and forth when you're working with epoxy sculpt. 
For the cow plants, they actually have two looks, one on the ground, one in a pot. So for this one, I want it to be the one in the pot, obviously, because I can, you know, so I can display it anywhere. And so this clay pot I actually got from Michael's, and I believe this is the, I don't know, they have so many different sizes. I think this is the third size, and it was perfect for the cow plant. And I literally filled this entire thing up with epoxy sculpt. Um, I wanted it to be really, really heavy so that it can hold the cow plant together. I was so concerned that it was gonna tilt over, and um, it has, you know, let me not fool you, it has tilted a few times, um, but alas, the cow plant is still alive. And now we're pretty much done with sculpting the cow plant. I sanded it as much as I can to give it the smooth finish, but obviously it is not perfect. So now I think it's time for color. So I'm just building up the whites for the cow plant over here, and you want to work um, in thin multiple layers. And now we can finally add the cow prints, which is so, so fun. I don't know why. I was just literally um, copying the reference photo that I had. But I have been obsessed with cow prints lately. I have no idea why. And I don't know, this one is just so, so stinking cute. I was very, very tempted to make it strawberry, like pink as well. Um, but I'm like, you know, let's not, because the black and white one is more iconic. And of course, we are painting the udders pink, you know, peachy pink. This was a mixture of two colors, and we're trying to blend it onto the cow plant. I remember when I first started playing Sims 2, and um, I, you know, when the cow plant is serving the cake, you're like, oh my god, there's cake! And so I, I was so curious, and I'm like, all right, let me have one of my favorite Sims, my favorite Sims at that time. Let me go ahead and have her eat it, and alas, she died. <laughs> so I'm like, what the heck? Um, but then, you know, the other one lives because the cow plants are essentially elixirs of life. So when you drink their milk, you can actually um, reduce your life, whatever, like you become younger. Um, but for them to produce the milk, they have to eat a sim. And so when they are getting really, really hungry, at least this is for The Sims 2, I forget how it is for The Sims 4, um, when they are hungry, they will um, give off a bait of a cake um, from their tongue. And um, yeah, it's kind of cute. It's like that, what is it, angler fish or whatever, where they give off a bait for other fishes to go in. So it's giving very that. So when they eat, um, when a sim attempts to eat the cake, they, the cow plants will actually eat the sims, and then they will produce the elixir milk. So, it's a cycle of life. It's pretty much what I'm saying. <laughs> I do wish that, I don't recall how it is in Sims 4, I haven't played it in a while. I don't think they were making moo sounds in Sims 2. Um, so I, I wish that, you know, that would be so cool if they are just like, Rrr. you know what I mean? That would be so cool. Over here, I sprayed everything with Mr. Super Clear because I want to work with pastels for this one. And I wanted to really blush up the udders. I wanted to blush up the teeth and also the horns. And when I say brush, I actually mean like adding dimension, not necessarily like blushing with pink. Like I'm just adding dimension, I'm contouring it, you know what I mean? I'm adding details with color, with um, soft chalk pastels. Over here, I'm just taking some plastic fake florals and fauna. Well, it's just leaves. And this is the closest that I can find that relates to a cow plant color, at least from the video game. So yeah, I'm just gonna work with these ones and we're gonna layer it up. And this one was actually so fun to do. I was just using hot glue and I mean, you know, you're just gluing like leaves onto this, <laughs> this cow plant hybrid. And I don't know why, but it was just so, so like, it was freaking cool to say the least. And then I thought the stem was a little too plain, so over here I'm just using hot glue to create dimension, kind of like roots and like veins around the stem. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint over that again. 
I made the stem actually a little bit lighter so it can match the leaves that I was using. Um, for some reason I thought I was going to use darker leaves but alas I couldn't find one. So I was like let me go ahead and you know try to match the, the 3D leaves that I was actually using. So lots of green, lots of darker green, lots of black. So lots of dimension for this one. This tail moment over here is so freaking cute. I have no idea why, but it's just like, I can I can just imagine it in the game, like swaying its tail. <laughs> so one thing that you can hear from the cow plant is the bell noise. And they have this bell over here. And I got this from um, Hobby Lobby, unfortunately. But this was the perfect size. And I'm like, oh my God. And it, yes, it actually does ring. It was so stinking cute. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that to our cow plant. And with that, we are we're done. We're done with the cow plant. We're done with Juno Birch. And they are ready to set the Sims world on fire. One um one dead sim at a time. <laughs> one burned sim, one tortured sim at a time.